This morning at 5 a.m., I woke up thinking about time. How often do you say to yourself, I don't have enough time, or where has the time gone, or those darn emails screwed up my schedule again? Hi, I'm Nelson Davis, and today I want to share some of my thoughts about time management with you. The good news is that you have just as much time as anyone else. Billionaires and poor people get the same 24-hour serving of it as do you and I. The bad news is that if we don't manage our 24-hour gift of time very well, we won't accomplish what we came here to do. The measurement and use of time has been almost an obsession with me since I was a child. I used to, I used to wonder how the President of the United States, Eisenhower at that time, managed to do so much between reading briefing books, making speeches, taking trips, and hopefully giving some attention to his wife, Mamie. The truth is, we can't really manage time. What we are attempting to do is manage ourselves in relation to the passage of time. It keeps on moving no matter what we do. I've discovered that the most important step in getting a grip on how we handle time is to be very clear about what we want or need to accomplish. When you have that done, the often despised to-do list comes into play as your number one tool. What you write on it has to be carefully chosen to support whatever it is that you decided you want to accomplish. A very delightful and successful owner of a produce distribution company shared her to-do list approach at one of my Superstars of Small Business events. She writes down only five things on her daily list, and she only does those five things. Obviously, if she sticks with that discipline each day, she completes 25 things during the work week. And I think most of us would be pretty pleased if we were getting 25 things done during the week. Now, you know, of course, unexpected things come up that need your attention. Something on the list doesn't get done. And even if you get it all done or don't get it all done, completing 12 important tasks in a week will grow your business. This morning, I read a, a good interview with Oprah Winfrey about how she gets things done. As you probably know, she runs her own TV network, among other things, and through business ownership, she has become a multi-billionaire. It seems that she often starts a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a penetrating question that I liked. She asks, what's your intention here with me? That sort of question demands a very clear response, and now both people know the purpose of the discussion. A dream for most of us is like the one that Oprah is now living, and that is she only does what she wants to do. We all wish for that. Recently, I met another well-known and accomplished person here in Los Angeles, Eric Garcetti. He's the mayor of L.A., and he said that to keep control of your time, you can't let the urgent overcome the important. Reading Oprah's approach to getting things done got me thinking about one of the sort of criminal-level time wasters, and that can be meetings. Yes, they are needed and can serve a wonderful purpose, but you have to apply some strict guidelines. In my TV production business, the rules for meetings are pretty simple. There's a formal start time and a maximum end time. I have a written agenda and insist that everyone attending brings a pen and a notepad. One thing about that system that I love is being able to later ask people what was the result of their actions rather than did they actually take any action. We all have to avoid procrastination, which will sink the best of intentions. Speaking of meetings, I once heard a story that may uh, not be true, but it was fun to listen to. It was about the legendary 1940s industrialist and playboy Howard Hughes. Mr. Hughes was wildly eccentric and held meetings at strange times, especially those at night. The story went that sometimes he'd hold important meetings in the men's room, saying that was one of the few places where everyone knew exactly what they were doing. <laughs> Can you imagine doing that in today's politically correct and overregulated atmosphere? Probably not. How are you handling your relationship with time in your business? The key ideas are... Be clear about what you want to accomplish and develop clarity from your employees or associates as well. Work from a list so that no matter how tired or confused you may get, and yes, we all get there, you'll always get back to what's important. 
and don't let even urgent distractions keep you away from doing what is most important. Also, I think that you really must schedule some time alone to simply think, because it's those thoughts that will drive your life and your business. I'm Nelson Davis, and I want to help you prosper and thrive in this entrepreneurial world.